my name is Alison McGregor and I'm a horticultural consultant based in Mildura in northwest Victoria. Today I'm talking about spray calibration, except I don't think of spray calibration just as being liquid. Spray calibration is about configuring your machine and then working out the liquid that you need to get good spray coverage. I want to cover three steps because you have to think in three steps when you're configuring a machine. First of all, you have to think about what your target is, what you're trying to spray. Secondly, you have to think about the air, managing the air optimally to get the t to the target. And then last, we're going to think about water delivery. So why are we thinking about targets? When you put your machine in the shed at the end of last season, I'm guessing it's very likely that it's still set up the way you parked it as being set up to spray a very large full canopy. And now we're dealing early season with a very small target zone potentially, depending on the type of canopy you've got. So we must think about bringing our spray target back to the, the biological target and the canopy size that we're trying to spray early season. Now let's talk about air. Air is critical to get right. We've got to think about volume, speed and air direction. Starting with volume, early in the season, really you're probably only trying to spray a very small zone. You might just be trying to put on a cordon spray for rust or bud mite control. You might be putting a spray onto 20 centimetres of shoot growth. And if you've only got um, a spur pruned cordon, it's a really very narrow zone that you're trying to project the spray plume into. If you've got a minimally pruned canopy, of course you've got a much larger zone to send that spray plume into. So try and think about the air volume that you need to come out of your sprayer just to displace the zone that you want your spray to go into. Getting the air direction right is critical. There's no point you putting spray out that ends up going into the next row, under the vines, over the top of the vines. You can influence your air direction by adjusting your fans. You can adjust the angles, the heights. If you've got ducts, you can usually manoeuvre the ducts. One of the things about air direction that people should give more attention to is when you've got opposing air. And if you've got air coming in from different sides, at that point where they intersect, the air could go in all sorts of directions. So measure it, get out there with flagging tape and have a look at where the intersecting air is going so that you keep the spray plume within your canopy. The next consideration is your air speed. Air speed is really important because if your air speed is too slow, your droplets won't get as far as they need to to get inside the canopy. If your air is too fast, you're very likely to have the droplets land on the target, but then the follow through air might shear it back off again and you'll end up with less retention on the target. Uh, early season at flowering uh, is a very critical time to get the airspeed right. Don't overdo air early at flowering. Now you can adjust your airspeed quite simply by changing the fan gearing. You can also adjust your airspeed by distancing the fan further from the target because the air will slow down the further it has to travel towards the target. And you can also adjust your airspeed by altering your travel speed, the, the tractor travel speed. So three simple ways that you can manipulate your airspeed to make it ideal for the job that you're doing right now. Now let's talk about nozzles and choices of nozzles. There's a huge range of nozzles available to you. Fine nozzles give nice even coverage, but they're drift prone. Coarse nozzles put out a, a wide range of droplet sizes and there'll be some fines in there but they're also large droplets. Now they can travel a long way, they've got their own momentum which could be good but once they arrive on the target they probably bounce, shatter and they're not, they're not very efficient at good coverage. So you've got to choose what kind of droplet spectrum you want to deliver into your canopy. Personally, I like hollow cone nozzles because they deliver an even size distribution. If I use solid cone nozzles, then I get a much wider range of droplet sizes and I figure that a lot of them then are either going to be too small or too large. So go for, I would go for a hollow cone nozzle in a droplet size spectrum that I knew was going to give me the most even coverage. Just remember when you're spraying, it's what lands that counts. So you need a way of going out and having a look at what the coverage in your canopy is like and then making a decision about whether you actually delivered enough spray and whether the, the evenness and the type of droplets are appropriate to what you're trying to achieve. Now the simplest way to assess your coverage is to use some of those readily available tools like water sensitive papers or fluorescent dye or clay, kaolin, um, and go and have a look and make sure that you've got good even coverage. Now you could ask the question, what am I aiming for it to look like? And there are some rules of thumb that come out of the chemical industry and you can have a look online and find examples perhaps on water sensitive papers for example that show what 85 droplets per square centimetre might look like and so that you can then aim to match your coverage with those examples of what coverage should look like. 
Um, now those are very generic, but they're a good starting point. So the last step in this configuration process is to calibrate your nozzles. A lot of growers I know are relying on the cab controller to give you an output that tells you your litres of per hectare output rate. But I would really encourage you early season to calibrate every single nozzle. There would be, you may be surprised by the rate, the variation in output from your different nozzles. If you've got a whole arm that's under delivering compared to another arm on the sprayer, or a whole side of the machine, or a whole fan head, then you'll end up potentially with striping of disease through the canopy. You really want to, through the vineyard, you really want to avoid that. You may have blocked nozzles, you may have worn nozzles, you may have issues with pressure through the manifold. And by testing, you can identify all of those, you can fix them, and you can get a nice even coverage coming out right across your sprayer. So when it comes to either looking at delivery of droplets through your canopy or whether it's about uh, looking at nozzles and calibrating, that all comes down to being something that you can measure and if you can measure it, you can manage it. Now you've got all of that configuration set up perfectly for the beginning of the season but don't forget that as the canopy develops, everything changes, the canopy gets bigger, it uh, becomes a different beast to spray and your biological targets change. So you'll need to get out and reconfigure at least a couple of other times during the season. Well clearly I'm very passionate about configuring sprayers, uh, but I've seen the difference that it can make to the delivery and also the disease control at the end of the season. So I hope that there, there are some points in there that will prompt you to go out and just make some of those basic checks and make sure that your delivery is optimal this season.